All right, so uh, this gentleman is here for mesotox or mesobotulinum toxin. Essentially, the term meso is from the 1920s or 30s for uh, the French people called uh, something called mesotherapy, which essentially meant therapy of the mesodermis, which we don't call it the mesodermis, we call it just the dermis. But in respect to that old terminology, we're causing, causing this, ca calling this mesotox. So what is that? Essentially, it's placement of botulinum toxin, or uh, Botox for short, even though it's a brand name. I try not to use brand names here, but Botox, everyone knows as a, as a brand. And essentially, we're placing Botox into the neck and chest for this gentleman. He came to me because he didn't like the fact that his neck looked creepy, and especially when he turned his neck. Now, a lift or a face or neck lift can help a little bit, but he really actually doesn't look that bad in his neck and his jawline, so I don't think he needs a lift, and it won't entirely address it anyways. So the most targeted solution for him is to manage the fragmented uh, collagen that's occurring at the dermal level, that is the middle layer of the skin. And there's two major mechanisms that I use to improve the dermal quality. One is this dilute large quantity um, placement of botulinum toxin into the middle layer or dermis or again mesodermis and that causes a healthy regeneration of the tissue. So people always think it's a toxin of some kind and it's dangerous. It's actually quite the opposite. It's the only most, it's the most powerful healing agent out there for the skin that exists. If you think about, if you are familiar with Botox and let's say you've been getting Botox for a few years now and you go a year without Botox. Uh, for example, I've had a few patients during COVID where they didn't even get Botox for two years. They still looked amazing. They had barely any wrinkles. In the area where the wrinkles typically are the worst, which is the upper third of the face. The problem with that is how about all the rest of the sun damaged areas? This gentleman's sun damaged areas are correlated with where he wears his um, shirt collar down, and you can see that the, the, where the collagen looks fragmented, the skin texture looks poor, is due to sun exposure. It's the number one problem, especially for fair skin individuals. So, mesobotox, mesobotulinum toxin, is helping to repair the local circul circulation, the fragmented collagen, the, the destroyed tissues, um, in a way that's profound. So, instead of having just the upper portion of the face look good through Botox, it's actually helping the, I do the lower thirds, the lower two thirds of the face, the neck and the chest. For him, the major issue is really the neck and chest area. That's why I'm treating that area with Botox. The other method that I use is radio frequency microneedle, and they both together work synergistically. I call it like Reese's peanut butter cups, where the, together they, they actually make the skin look even better because they both work toward collagen regeneration. A natural question people have would be, can I just laser this? And the answer is no. So I use IPL, uh, broadband light lasers, for surface epidermal color changes and minor, minor surface textural issues. But lasers the neck fail at many levels because the problem with the, the lasers is that they honestly simply cannot go deep enough uh, to manage the collagen because there's not enough oil glands, so you'll scar the, scar the skin if you try to go deep with the, uh, the laser. You simply cannot laser deep enough. So we have to find newer methods that actually help the way that the neck skin looks. And really it's a combination of dilute large volume Botox and last one here, okay, we got, um, the last, and he's already been pre numb so he shouldn't feel too much of this. He'll feel a little bit, but it should not be bad. But um, the two golden tickets, in my opinion, to manage neck crepey skin, besides ongoing sun avoidance, is not a deep laser, not Fraxel. If you've been sold that, I bet you had a minimal outcome, or you could have scarring. Neither one is acceptable. The two methods are gonna be a radio frequency microneedle and micro uh, botulinum toxin. The quick summary of the RF microneedle is that microneedle by itself, you say, well, I've done microneedle. Microneedle just doesn't do anything. 
you need the radio frequency to tighten up the collagen. And the two, as I said, are like Reese's peanut butter cups. They work together for better collagen fragmentation improvement. And also the benefit of what Botox does is it causes a cellular healing of the skin that I have never seen. It's amazing. And then if you combine it with IPL or light therapies to manage the surface epidermis, which this does not manage that well, you get sort of the trifecta in improving the neck and chest.